Fairyland. It's tea with Tamara. Today is a beautiful day. Good morning. Good morning to you. <sighs> well, today is a spectacular day already. I actually dropped a 10 pound weight on my head. True story. Um, but <laughs> it happened. I swear to good God, we are great at manifesting the thing because I teach an abs class on Wednesday nights at, at Climax. Come on down and check it out. Um, but there was also abs work at the beginning of the lift four legs workout that I was doing. And in my head, I was like, I don't want to do the lift four workout today. And so uh, like the ab workout, because I was doing abs tonight. So as I lifted up the, the 10 pound weight to do what was scheduled in the actual workout. Good morning, everybody. I dropped the weight. It landed right here. I'm okay. Could have been a hundred times worse. That's all. And it wasn't. So I am very um, blessed and full of gratitude that I didn't hurt myself this morning. Uh, that was just an opening story here. I want to get into um, really a big thing. Now, having been in the industry of serving uh, beautiful, energetic, light-filled beings for the last year and a half, one of the things that I come in contact with is the ability for women not to stand in their power and rise to the highest level of themselves. We are set as humans to go through all this emotion of guilt and shame and all of these like icky feelings that prevent us from making the decisions that we need to make for ourselves, for our future to rise us up into the next level of ourselves to serve the community of people that we've been put on this earth to do. But that doesn't really allow us as a collective, as a human race, as an individual to raise not only our vibration, but the vibration of others. So this week came so crystal, like everything's been crystallizing uh, this week for me and for, for really what this message is for all of us as like, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you work nine to five, whether you are at home with your kids, we can all choose to rise into a level of leadership to inspire the life of somebody that we know, right? And so I want you to take a moment here and to really think about what that looks like, because there comes for some reason a small piece of discomfort over the idea of leading a collective or leading a tribe or being present for people to look at you and say like, wow, what are you doing? What do I need to do to get there too? And so like, I'm, I'm bringing this up because A, I went to see uh, Made for More by Rachel Hollis on Tuesday one of these days, Tuesday, and it was spectacular. It was an exceptional movie. But one of the things that she had said was that she wanted every single person in the theater to become a leader. And I just wanted to give you a little personal story about what leading feels like from my perspective, and then really inspire or to ask you to come into that state as well because it is slightly uncomfortable to make the shift from where you are into. And it's like, a, it literally can be as simple as a light switch turning on that you choose to step into the next side of being in that leadership role. So for me, I remember vividly when the leading started to take over. So when I started last year, and here's the first piece of the puzzle of really becoming so set in what it is that you want to achieve, right? So make an unstoppable goal, a goal that is so big or so much and so important to you that nothing and no one would ever have any ability to shift you from the direction of that goal. Come hell or high water, that's your thing right? So for me, it was writing my first book. I was like, I'll give up going out with my friends. I will do whatever, but like, I want to write my book and I want to serve these people from the book and I'm going to make a difference with them and all. And my blinders went on, right? And so everything I did, Tamara, do you want to come out? No. Tamara, do you want to do this? No. Do you want to? No, no, no. Because I became so crystal clear on what it was that I wanted to achieve in this world, the imprint that I started wanting to make. I had been through the life that I had been through, just as you all have, right? In order to share our stories and then invite others to come along and get to the space in which you have achieved. So that's fine and dandy until all of a sudden you are faced with somebody that looks at you and says, oh my goodness, 
and I was talking about this today, you're so strong. Like, how are you doing it? Like, I don't, I, I just look at you and I think, wow, you're doing some really great things. And you're just like, what, soul sister? I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm just, you know, I just set a goal and I went from here to achieving the goal. Like, I think that that's really straightforward. But what we don't realize is how many of us don't make that commitment alone. We don't set a goal for ourselves that is uncomfortable and then actually take action to achieve that goal. So when we see somebody that is doing that, and again, it can be, I'm going to be the hell best PTA mom in the land. Like I'm going to be able to assist. Maybe I'm going to give some food recipes. I'm going to show up to everything with a hundred percent of myself. And that is a freaking amazing goal. Good morning, everybody. Right. And so you set something that is achievable. And whether it's I want to start a YouTube station about what chaos with my family looks like, it doesn't matter. But you put on blinders to achieving that. And then there comes a space where you get to be the person people go to. And so I'm going to give you an example of, you know, we research, we feel the need, that's a solar plexus thing, to think that we need more. So I'm going to look at YouTube videos. I'm going to, you know, read more books. I'm going to show up and read, I'm going to listen to the podcast and I'm going to do all of these, which of course you do because they're amazing. And I love all of those things because it's constant learning. But what if there was a switch in which you started creating those things? That's what I mean by rising. That's what I mean by leading is instead of turning to others as the means to learn, you become the person that others start to look to in order to solve a problem. And we all have that capacity. There is not a single person watching this video who doesn't have within them a leading part of themselves, something they have been through or something that they're really good at that they can share and help somebody else who is looking to achieve that thing. And so there's this discomfort that I felt last year. And if you follow me on Facebook, you know that I was just like, oh, I feel like I'm not fitting in. I'm not getting along with everybody. I'm missing, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have time to spend time with all of the people and like all the things and like, am I a bad person? And, and I started to feel guilt about the fact that I couldn't do it all. I couldn't go out to all the dinners or the parties or the get togethers or every invitation that I was getting, whether it was from people that I was working with or for my family or anything, because I was so focused on serving. And then it hit me and it hit me strong. And this will always be one of those moments because I was sitting naked in the sauna because the sauna has got a voice to me. But anyway, it was spirit speaking, but I happened to be in the sauna at the time. And spirit said, you aren't meant to fit in. You are meant to lead. And it was like one of those aha moments that if we're constantly trying to put our energy into fitting in, that it doesn't create any space for us actually to step into that role of rising to the highest level of ourselves and being able to inspire people to follow their light path as well. And I'll say this too, like even if you work in an office, right? Think about the fact that if you're giving 100% of everything that you do and new hires are coming in, who are they going to lean to or who are they going to like promote or who are they, the person that is standing 100% into giving all that they have into the one thing that they know that they're exceptional at? Right? So this is universal. This is not just about being a businesswoman or an entrepreneur. It's about standing in your light and come hell or high water, you do not choose not to shine it no matter what is happening. And then you offer support for those who look to you and say, help me, help me get to where you are. I think you are strong and wonderful and amazing. And now I want to do the same thing. Right. And here's a piece of the puzzle. You guys look at this and you can see me on Facebook and you can say, you don't see me crying this week. Right. You don't know that sometimes being a leader feels lonely or uncomfortable or you think, oh, my God, how am I going to show up every day and serve or how am I going to be able to create new content or how. And that's when we get into our head and that doesn't exist, because if you show up with love in your heart, with the intention of, of making a difference and sharing and just being in that space of that love light for others. And we detach from the outcome of what that love life looks like. Like if you can actually physically detach from the outcome and just know that you are showing up in that moment, in that day to put out or to be present or to do whatever it is with 100% of your love, guys, that's all it takes. 
That is all, they don't put expectations or boundaries or thoughts or, you know, outcomes onto what that love light, you know, if you get an inspiration to create a video or get up on a live, do it. Don't think later, I'll do it. Do it now. Don't, don't like that inspiration is the most powerful thing that we have, right? If you're getting that calling or that urge or that inkling, show up for that, be present for it, love the shit out of it, and then send that love out into the world. Like, ooh, I once worked with somebody who had notebooks and notebooks of those intuition ideas that she got that she never was taking action on. What the hell, that lost and like that, right? Just be the person who just does the thing right away. Like, oh, I feel like I wanna put a dance party up on, you know, Facebook. So I'm gonna like get my dance party on up on Facebook because that inspired somebody to have a smile and to get up and do a dance party for themselves. Don't think that it didn't. Small things make the biggest changes in the lives of those that are watching. And the other thing that I'm gonna say is really, I have, you, you see what I'm doing, you see how far and how, like exceptional books and all of these things, but I can promise you the one thing that I have done that I have never gone without is energetically aligning with somebody who is doing what I wanted to be doing. So for the last three years, I have always had a mentor, you guys, always. And I will never go with, I went three months without one, not that long ago, like a few months ago. And it was like eh, the most awful experience of my life because energy rises. We want to rise to, so we want to surround ourselves with people whose energy are higher than us so that we are, our energy is constantly like, I'm coming, I'm coming, right? We want to raise up. We don't want to be standing and placing our energy trying to fit in or to uh, bring it down to, to, you know, make ourselves acceptable to energies that are lower than us. We want to be the energy that people are rising up to meet. And then we have somebody that we're rising up to meet. So like, whether it's me, whether it's somebody you've been watching on Facebook or Instagram, reach out, have a conversation at least to see if you're a good fit to find like that person as a mentor, because it makes a stinking difference. And I could tell you that it doesn't, but it 100% does because how many times do I know that I've worked with somebody and then they've stopped working with me and they haven't chosen to work with somebody else. And they're like, everything stopped. I don't know why, but everything stopped. My sales stopped, my this stopped, my that stopped. And I'm like, because we're not, you, we constantly need to be rising to the next level of ourselves. And so like, whatever you're doing, whoever it is, make a connection, right? Because that's also a piece of being a good leader is finding the support that we need in order to be the best version of ourselves and my shirt says dream so dream big go big go all in that's the other piece of being like rising is that you can't just go in with a tiptoe into the water to see like get a running start get it going and then jump go all in because it's better to go all in and fail like it feels so good to fail i failed a billion times in the last year and a half that's a slight exaggeration but maybe it's not like i i don't know how many times i've failed i can't wait because i'm writing a blog about how i made a half a million dollars in my business and i have nothing to show about it because i have failed sisters i'm into that right? So failure is my favorite thing because I'd rather have failed and made that money and learned so much about my business and never have failed at all, <laughs> right? So like go all in regardless of what the outcome is. Some things are going to go exceptionally well and some are you're going to and you're going to be like, well, that was not the right decision. But now you know that and you get to maneuver into making more and more right decisions. So it's, it's failing is the most fun, right? Change the perception on the things that you're saying. I just want to like go off on a tangent here, right? If your words are like, I'm not good at tech. I don't know how to run a business. I don't like to be in front of people. I don't want to do this. Guys, you're setting yourself up for failure before you even start. Choose the opposing. Last week I had to do a sales page copy and it was the most excruciating two days of my life. Excruciating. Excruciating. Because I had always said that I was not good at doing anything like that. And so, but I chose, and somebody actually asked me that afterwards. They said, you know, we, at the last retreat, I've always said to Mara, how do you get so much done in a day? Because I do the things, even if they're something I don't want to do at all. Even if there's something that I don't want to do at all, I never don't show up 100% for it. 
right? And so I spent two days without stopping. It took me, I don't know, like eight one hour sessions to finish the copy for the Shocker Business Academy. Now I've built a business that has been successful without having a sales page for the Shocker Business Academy, right guys? So like, I'm not saying this is something that you need to do. I'm just saying that when you do it, go all in on it 100%. And I think that that's a lot of ranting right now. So I'm going to stop. But guys, become a leader today. Don't make it another day goes by. Rise up to this level of yourself. Really show up for the people that you are here to do. Show up for yourself. Show up with love. And then just choose. Turn that switch on. If somebody asks you, yes, you are that person that somebody can ask. You are that strong. You are that full of grace. You are that amazing. And so don't say, mm why are they looking at me and saying these things and wanting to know this information? Rise up into the energy of being that person. But other than that, I love you all, <laughs> right? You can still pop on over. Um, I'm almost done. Uh, the seven day chakra series in Tamara, Tamara isms. It's a Facebook page. It's, it's a closed group. If you want to go deeper into the energy of your business and how to transform it, Tamara isms to rock your energy and transform your business. I'll put the link in, in the um, chat box here, but guys, I love you. I love you. I love you. I think you are all every single one of you, the most capable, amazing leader in the land to so rise up to that energy today. Care Bear Stare of love from me to you. Mwah.